Number one thing is, I want to tell you, be prayerful. Be prayerful. Because prayers, be prayerful, and I'll give you a scripture. Be prayerful. Because prayerfulness puts you in charge. Listen to me. Prayers, are you listening? Are you listening? Prayers are not just for victory. Prayers are not just for battles. Prayers a lot of the times, they are for dominion in the midst of battles. They put you in charge. Somebody who is not prayerful, battles come to him and his life is already scattered. Even as he's sniffing the battle, coming, it's already scattered. He was, this person only has a dick and has died. Pray, pray, prayerlessness make you a coward. And you know, a coward dies a thousand times before they are dead. Be prayerful. Somehow, in prayerfulness, you will not only be strengthened, but you will know what is about to befall you. Jesus went to the garden of Gethsemane and prayed three times. He prayed so much that he was in charge when he was being angry. He was in charge. No betrayer of emotion. He was in charge of every little detail of his suffering leading up to his death. He was in charge. He was not cursing people. He was not, you know, he was not fidgeting. He was not severing in front of his enemy. The Bible says, in nothing terrified by your enemy, which is a token of destruction to them. If you're terrified in front of the enemies, you're destroyed. If you fear, you fall. One of the greatest weapons of Satan is fear. And there is no way a prayerless person will not be fearful. If laziness is coming to you in any aspect of life, battle it in the place of prayers. When it comes to the place of prayers, don't allow it. Something very serious is about to hit you of permanent consequences. Leave yourself. If you're prayerful, you're praying, you're praying so much, and yet it seems as if everything is breaking down, it's breaking down, nothing is coming together. Leave it, don't worry. You just don't worry. Don't let anything discourage you out of prayer. We are not ignorant of the devil's devices. We know how he works. It is when you are at your most prayerful time that the devil will make you think that it's not working. Find something else to do with it. Because that is when he's eating him below the bed. The most. Have you not seen boxers? When you eat them where it matters. They take it on the chain with just two. They just smile. But the thing hit them. Probably they are going to take them to the hospital the following day to go and remove and reset some teeth. But it, <laughs> because they've been boosted up psychologically. They've been taught psychologically that they should not allow their opponent to see that a weakness has occurred. That is the master trick of the devil. He already knew from the moment they began to beat Jesus, blood began to drip down. He already knew something was wrong. But there was no way he could stop it anymore. He already knew. Don't ever be in a prayerless club. Don't ever be. You will bear certain consequences that will be permanent. In prayerfulness, or in, in prayers, 
You don't even know yourself what God is doing, but you just discover some unusual boldness, some unusual confidence, that when you get to the midst of the battle, the devil is asking all his demons, go and check him out. So why is he behaving now? Why is he behaving now? Because you see, the whole of the battles of this life are, are situated in the mind. What the devil is throwing arrows at is your mind. Nobody can make you succeed if you are defeated in your mind. Nobody. Not even God. Because as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. The mind is the middle ground between the body and the spirit. Whichever one the mind goes with is the one that wins. If he goes with the fear in the body, the fear in the body wins. If he goes with the confidence in the spirit, the confidence in the spirit wins. There is no time a man who refuses to give up, there is no time he's not going to win. It is the truth. It is the truth. Because in winning, in life, the scripture tells us, both in Luke 18 and in Galatians 6, that in winning in life, you go through many orders to the point where you're about to faint or you're about to be weary. And the two of them tells us, the two of them tell us that if you're weary, you will not get rewarded. If you faint, you will not be uh, uh, justified. You will not be vindicated. You see? Sometimes, somebody goes on 21 days of fasting and pray. I remember Pastor Deboye <laughs> was running through a story. And he said, when I inherited redeemed Christian Church of God, there were some problems. Very mighty problems. And I, the first thing I did was that I went on a 40 days fasting and prayer, not eating or drinking. He said he came out of the prayers. He said the problems were still there. Ah, I said, Heavenly Father. <laughs> After 40 days. He has the largest Pentecostal church on earth today of any country, any continent, any nation. Don't be bewildered when your prayers are being stored. God will never hold a man. One day, they will be attended to. Acts chapter 10, your givings and your prayers have come up as a memorial before God. The angel of the Lord told Cornelius, only God knows for how many years he has been in that prayer. He became the first of the Gentiles, not just to be born again, but to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, acting. He became the first of the Gentiles. There was a Gentile that had been born again before him. You remember the Ethiopian eunuch? He's been born again before him. He has gone back to Ethiopia, but he was not baptized in the Holy Ghost. This is the first Gentile to be brought into the inheritance of the Spirit. <laughs> Fire the forces of his prayers and givings. Because he didn't give up. So one day he met with an angel in the place of prayer. Why naturally will a man not be tired when he's praying? And it seems as if the more he pray, the tougher the terrain, be, the tougher the terrain becomes. But it's not true. Things are actually softening up, only that you don't know. So Jesus said, a man ought always to pray and not to faint. And eventually he told us, when I come back to the earth, will I find faith or not? Galatians chapter 6 told us that, let not be willing in well doing, for in due season we say, in due, that's a due season. But the due season can never come if you're not prayerful. The time will come, it will pass. You won't find anything. Somebody say not me. Somebody say not so. That's the reason why David first down somewhere, he said, he said, no, one of the prophets, 
He said, the summer has come, the harvest is gone, yet we are not saved. But a prayerful man, because a prayerful man is a stupid man, physically. Spiritually is wise. A prayerful man, physically is a stupid man. Everybody is asking, get out of here, go find something. Just stay there. Just stay there stupidly. That's connected to the message we're preaching today. Just stay there stupidly. When God answers, it is not if God answers, if a man is prayerful. It is not if God answers. When God answers, you'll be telling yourself, but I never pray for all these things. I never, because you will have forgotten that you have touched them many, many times in your times of cry. And one thing about God, he keeps record. Don't forget the Bible says God keeps covenant and mercies. He keeps details of covenant. God keeps record. He keeps records. As a matter of fact, as you're seated in this place right now, you have a guardian angel around you. It's your own personal angel that writes everything that you do down, including your prayers. The day they will be attended to, it is not if, it's when. It's not every day prayer is attended to. It's attended to every day provisionally. It's attended to sometimes in reality. That's why we say, oh, miracle, miracle. But every day, they keep record of it. They keep record of it. Oh, he has asked for 39 things today. Oh, she has asked for 40 things today. And one day, you just look back and see how big God has made you. Pastor Debo, he went to that 40 days. He came back and the devil was laughing. He said, <laughs> fasting and prayers don't stop any problem. My brother, my sister, fast. Pray. Don't hear what the devil is saying. I'm telling you, things are good, fast. Things are not good, fast. Pray. The devil is saying, <laughs> you don't even know how devil is that. It's not somebody who came back from the university as a mathematician like you that God can use in ministry. The man who prophesied that you are the general overseer is a lie. <laughs> Don't you see that you are better off as a lecturer than as a pastor? As a pastor now, people you are even teaching, they don't understand you. They are stuck literally. For how long are you going to be in this? The church that Pastor Deboye inherited was a church of stuck illiterate. The man was only speaking Yoruba. Pastor Deboye was the one interpreting to any one or two people that understand English, that don't understand Yoruba. <laughs> He says, so when he came back from 40 days and nothing has happened, he said, he said oh, God, I want to do another one. <laughs> so he started another 40 days. He said he came back, he said the problems were still there. He said in one year, he did 40 days, 40 days, 40 days, no eating, no drinking. What he did not know that time, that God was going beyond the scope of the problems. You're not hearing me. God was going beyond the scope of the problem. God wanted to make him number one in the gospel ministry on earth. And he is. You need to go to the Damsa camp in your lifetime before you die. Because there is no place that is died that on earth in the gospel ministry. No place on earth. Anywhere, including China. No place. where about 20 million people can gather at once. They do program for two weeks. People are there every day. Hundreds of thousands, millions of people are there. And it's talking one by one because the prayers of those days have broken beyond gates. Don't be discouraged that your problem lasts longer than necessary because God is dealing with with issues beyond the scope of this problem you think you have. It's dealing with many, many issues. That by the time the delivery, by the time the delivery of what God wants to do actually comes to you, you'll be like this. Pastor Debo said, they're only doing a camp in a place so that people can be coming. The only thing he prayed for is that one day God will make me worship in the midst of a million people. 
1998, I was in Lagos when he had the first largest Christian gathering on earth. Eight million people. Lucky 98, go and Google it. Eight million people. Eight million people. Lucky 98. Eight million people for one night of crusade. Eight million people. They used to they use helicopter to count people on hectares. You can't count one by one. Receive grace. Receive grace. Receive grace. Your life will be great. Your life will be great. Hello, I said your life will be great. I said your life will be great. Thank God if you ever had any problem that chased you into the place of prayers. Please thank God. Just make sure that your problem is not chasing you to weed or to guess. You have died. Make sure your problems are not chasing you to pornography and to watching content. You have died and God cannot do anything about it. God and the devil, they don't have a place where they meet. The only time they will meet is in heaven when he will be judged to his lake of fire and they will ask him to take his city, hell. They say, take it, take it, take it, and all, because we don't need it. So they, and they will ask him to take his, his greatest servant, death. The Bible says both hell, death, and Satan, and everybody in there, they will be cast to the lake of fire where they cannot breathe. In hell, there is no breathing space. In the lake of fire, nobody can breathe. Because it's water and fire. Lake, lake, lake. Do people breathe underwater? If they breathe, go there. All of you that have been saying, I can die, I can swim. There is one place they call Lake Gada. It's the largest lake in Italy. If you know how many people have died during this summer, and they still go there. You say there are no evil spirits in Europe. And there was, I, I wanted to share something with us yesterday, but I said no. These people, all of them will run away. About the, the most powerful witchcraft coven in Europe. And they are very bold and they came out. If you like me to share with you, please wave your hand. I will share with you. Yeah. They came out, they said, we are the most powerful witches. And they said, we drive all the evil spirit we take from people, we drive them into the sea. White, not black color. White color. In Europe. They say people come from everywhere. They say we curse people. They say we curse people. We place curses on people. We do things. It exists here. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Are you listening to what I'm saying? Don't ever in your life stop praying. Thank God for any problem that drives you to the place of prayer. I see some of you are doing three, three days. Are you here in the church today? Move forward. Move forward. Move, yes, move forward. Some of you are doing three days, you are doing seven days. Don't stop. Watch what happens to you. Don't stop. In the place of prayers, over the course of the week, God spoke to me about something, about a particular man of God. And I called Pastor Sade three days ago. I said, this man of God, we want to do so, 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 and so, so, so. There was a little bit of argument, but it simmered down after some time. You understand what I'm saying? Now? How are you guys? God bless you. Did you win? You have not gone there? Hello? It's next week. You must win, no? Because Antonio and Usman <laughs> have done us bad double. <laughs> I pray for Ant uh, Antonio Joshua. In Jesus' name, you win. All the people from everywhere will say, hey, you, you, are, you are on high drug. <laughs> You don't know what to do with your life. You are, you are calling the name of God in vain. And I was begging God, please help me. Over 195 people. My wife said, this comment they are making is coming to her, to her home page. That she's seen it. I said, leave them. I don't want to answer them until Anthony Joshua. Please. Please. After they finished beating Anthony Joshua, I went to my text to go and do <laughs> Because I know they are coming back for me. 
And I told my wife, I said, I'm no longer a fan of Jesus. Because all the people that are beating him, now I must go for definity over affinity. It's affinity that is making me defend Joshua. This guy that defeated Joshua is a born again Christian. Alexandra Uliski. Or Uliski. <laughs> He's a born again. He proclaims it publicly. Anthony Joshua is saying, Insala. <laughs> when he become born again, I'll, I'll come to him. I was asking God, why do you do like this? <laughs> then there's another guy, Usman. Usman is a Nigeria UFC. He's the one who has been winning. Yeah, and he's been leading. He's the 12th run. He's been leading by point. The guy just give him one, one leg. Eh? <laughs> Poor. And die. <laughs> Only on one night I say, can it be, can it be more bad than this? <laughs> it cannot be worse than this. <laughs> you know, oh God of heaven. I began to think, I asked Jesus. Jesus said, always take divinity about having it. And I said, but where did I get confidence that, that Joshua will win? I asked my wife. My wife said, your emotion is what gave you confidence. And Joshua began to use expletive words in Saudi Arabia. He, he took all the belt of Uski and threw it away. He said, how did you beat me? You didn't beat me. It's Jesus that beat him. <laughs> because one is proclaiming Jesus. One is Anthony Joshua that is supposed to say, Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. He's not. You will win. You are going to win. You see Israel Ogusoya or is the fastest man in Ireland. He's a Yoruba man. Huh. Ah. <laughs> he connects his own way. <laughs> I say it's a Yoruba man. He say from Dundalk. <laughs> Evil man doesn't carry last. <laughs> Hallelujah. Boys, you win. Say amen. Say amen. You must win. In Jesus' name. Close your eyes when you are running. Don't look at it. <laughs> Jesus will take you on the eagle's wings. <laughs> you must win. In, Je in Jesus' name. You, don't, you all of you don't know. Many of these things have been power spiritually. They say many, the witches, they say many politicians come to us. And I know athletes go there also. They empower them. Stay there and not have God. The last bout of uh, Anthony Joshua before this one. After he finished fighting, I saw his right hand dry off, withered. Here, yeah, in the middle here, dry off. And I saw that he could not really use it. Because if you look at him, he's bulkier than this guy, he's taller than this guy, he has more physique, he has more stability than this guy. Why should he not be able to be this guy? They have done something to his hand here. Anybody who knows him, tell him, receive Jesus as his Lord and Savior. And I'll come back to pastor him. <laughs> then he will start winning again. For now, I can't allow anybody to give me hypertension. <laughs> Nigerians are not talking. We were happy. Nigerians were happy in the recent time with uh, Ese Brume, uh, Toby Amuso. They were, they were coming, uh, Commonwealth good. Yeah, world record. World. Nigeria was saying, yes, we believe in our country. We believe in ourselves. This night now, <laughs> there's no Nigeria on Facebook anymore. <laughs> there's no, there's no Niger Nigeria. Don't, Nigeria don't exist on Facebook. Nigeria, Nigeria say, Nigeria doesn't, <laughs> Nigeria doesn't support failure. <laughs> they don't support the Lori Brookwini. <laughs> so when I told my wife this morning that I'm no longer a fan of Anthony Jesus, I said, ah, ah. He's a sports fan. I say, oh. <laughs> it's like the way I cannot physically proclaim. I can't publicly proclaim that I'm Asna. <laughs> it's very hard. <laughs> it's very hard to say that I'm Asna. Leave me alone. It's very hard for me to say I'm Asna. Huh? I'm watching. Because they will raise your hook. <laughs> Uh, go and die of hypertension. No. When they win the Premier League, I will buy my jersey and I'll come out. 
But I, 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 I didn't, I didn't, I didn't subscribe to Asna. It was because some Nigerians were playing the like Kanu Wako 2004, and my brother was supporting them. I don't know how I acted that way, because and then my heart cannot come back to other clubs. I don't know why. This one was praying during the week for Manchester United. During prayer. Money, after, money prayer. He said, Pastor, let us pray for Manchester United. And I said, Ruben, let us pray for Anthony Joshua. It, during 6 a.m. prayers. <laughs> Nobody knew it was me and him at the back. He said, he's praying for Manchester United. <laughs> I said, they need every prayer. <laughs> that can be. I said, I need prayer for Anthony Joshua also. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I only feel for Cristiano Ronaldo. Cristiano. Because he's my friend. When he goes to any club, I follow him. I like him. I almost like him more than Messi. But Messi is a good person. He's cool-headed. Okay. So don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget. Are you listening? Don't forget. Don't forget. Prayers over prayers. Over everybody, please don't forget. Prayers over prayers, over prayers, Deji, over prayers, over prayers, over prayers, is what brings answered prayers. If you're not prayerful, you will be a beggar. You beg or not if you're not prayerful. You beg to be married. You beg to get job. You beg, as a pastor, you beg for people to be in your church. You'll be begging everybody. In the midst of millions of people, you'll be begging three members that are smoking weed around the street and trying to hold them down as church members so that your destiny can now totally be scattered because tight they won't pay because they have used the money to buy weed. After some time, they, they start begging you for money. So the little money you have, you give to keep church membership. I was telling Golden at the back, I said, don't hold anybody back. If we have done everything we can do to hold them down for the Lord and they don't work, don't try it. Don't hold down a lion. Let everybody live their life. The life they want to live, let them live it. Yes, of course. Fast for people. Pray for people. Don't force people. That is churchianity. That's not Christianity. Christianity is about making disciples. Churchianity is about making members. Making members is never rewarded. God will never reward you for making a member. This guy that is here now is a spion. Come, Esther. Yeah. <laughs> he drove from almost 40 minutes to be here. And was even here before most of you that live in Galway. On Friday when we are fasting, is fasting. It's not just fasting, it's standing up to pray. And you will see that it's pray. In few weeks of being born again, he got baptized in the Holy Ghost because of seriousness with devil. When we even think he's not understanding what we are saying. You're not hearing what I'm saying. You're not hearing what I'm saying. God adds to the church people such as to be saved. Please don't let the child distract you. Because it will grow up. Don't let the child distract you. They are very beautiful, but they can be distractive. Yeah, they can be very distractive. So listen, I am talking to you from death as an oracle of God. Please listen to me today. Listen to me. It's so important you listen to me. Okay? It's so important. No matter. Prefer divinity to affinity. You could be somebody's friends. If they don't want Christ anymore, let them want what they want. You're not hearing what I'm saying. You're not hearing what I'm saying. So many of you will fall, God forbid, because you keep dragging who has fallen. You can only give more life to the one that is alive. The one that is dead should be buried. You didn't hear me? Do CPR. Because if you don't bury him, he will start stinking. You will catch sickness. That's why if anybody leaves the church, I never sent any one of you to go and let me talk to them. 
I never sent you. I never sent you to go and be friends with them because I know you will soon go. Because they will load you with all the craps they have. And you will soon go. I learned it from Bisa Waliyoke. When you stay too much around those who are falling by the wayside, you will soon fall by the wayside. He told us many years ago. And it happened to me. I once told you that I once got involved in some form of immoral act. At age 30, that I never knew anything about it during masturbation. It was because I stayed around a friend who was an evangelist, but they fell. And was still trying to bring him up. And then he infected me with his disease. By talking. I didn't send you to anybody. You, you yourself, you are not even standing well. Then you are now helping me to go and talk to Sister Monica. What concerns you? Who went to talk to Judas when he left? They just face front. <laughs> they just say, one down. It's one down. It's not human being. They just move on. If God, he had marked anybody to be a member of this church, he will be catered for. He will be loved. He will be given all resources. He will be here. If God has not here marked, and not everybody in the world will be a member of this church, they will be better off in some other places. If God has not here marked anybody, they will not be here. I was here all the night. I slept a few hours. This month, I only left this place around 8, praying. Pray here, pray over there, pray wherever. You can see in my eyes that I like to sleep now. I'm not complaining. It's a good thing. It's a beautiful thing. It's not that maybe I like to leave my wife and children alone. Everybody is catered for. Everybody is prayed for one by one. That's apart from the prayers that go on during the week. If anybody's spirit has left and they have disconnected, leave them alone. But there are people who need to be helped. But there's a difference between help and force. I called somebody yesterday because I've not seen the person for some time. I, I called the person three days and the person called me back yesterday. And I said, how are you? I said, everything said, fine. The question is that, have you been going to work? He said, yes. Why have I not been seen? He said, I'm going through something. And I think affordance is the only way I can cope. And so if somebody say afford that, I, I, I said, do they for, do you have, I said, do you afford them at work also? He said, no. God be with you. There's nothing you can do about that. Jesus never did anything about that. The only thing you can do, go to the place of prayer and pray. If the person asks for advice, advise and pray. That's all. It's so important. Very important. Don't put yourself in the position of Jesus and say, I want to know the reason why. I want to know. By the time you get the reason why, somebody was talking to me about one of our fathers in the faith a number of months ago. I told myself, I will never, he's a man of God, I will never give this kind guy a chance to talk to me. My wife and I were the one who were there in Dublin. He began to talk to me about the moral life of, uh, he began to talk to me about uh, plagiarism of Kenneth Hagin, who is a referred father in the faith. You know, for anybody that is looking for fault, they will find fault in anything. If you stay around them, they will magnify the fault to you. Your life will be faulty. Did you hear what I'm saying? Some of you that think that Judas was not a bad person. Don't forget that his name means praise to God. It's his affinity with religious authority. They were not bad people. Religious authority that did him in. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no single person that is a member of this church that is not catered for. Some will take them out and use personal money. Prayers. If love is needed, love is given. Anything that is needed is given. Between Mirella and I, you don't have to be involved. Leave everybody for Mirella and I. We don't send you. And some of us even still give love. So if anybody now says they didn't love anybody, leave them. I can't, Jesus is the only one that died for people. Go and take your own love from Jesus. Some people need husband. That's why they think there is no love here. Some people need wife. And the love that a husband or wife is supposed to supply, I can't supply it. I don't have it. I don't. I do not. Go and find it by yourself anywhere you can find it. I can't. I can't. Some people need father and mother, biological ones. 
And I'm not a biological one. Neither my wife is a biological one. No. Some people need nurses and doctors. And we are not nurses and doctors. We are pastors. But if anybody's life needs money, I have some need to. I can help. Not because it's easy to give. I can help. We do help. And it's not anything because everybody, good church people, you guys are good. Everybody gives to everybody. It's not anything new. Are you listening to what I'm saying? That was one of them that I told. If by the time you want to do your fourth year or third year, you don't have school fees, tell me about your school fees. Not because I know her from Adam. Tell me about your school fees. I remember this young lady that, that told us one time uh, that it's a need for money. But she says she had the revelation. That's Docker. She had the revelation that she will have plenty of money. But I remember standing there and raising money. And in no time, people were already gathering about 2,000 euros. And we even gathered, you wanted to give. I said, no, I will get money. And she eventually got the money she says it was. And she even gave me out of it also. <laughs> Are you listening to what I'm saying? Are you listening to what I'm saying? So it's not money. Nobody who is supposed to be paid for school fees or anything will not be. Nobody who has house cannot be paid for here. We, we are blessed. It's not mouth making. And people are very generous. But if God has now moved somebody, because God has the body of Christ and is very big, from one place to another, please, if God still send you here, and if God did not send you here, there is nothing I can do about it. Very important. Very important. I, I said that while saying this. Be prayerful so that you won't be a beggar. If you're not prayerful, you'll be beggarly in life. Pray. And now, of serious importance is what is prayers about? Because we're talking about grace this month. And let me quickly connect it and uh, we'll close for today. Don't, don't, don't. You, if, you, if you follow life around looking for how life can favor you and your knees are not bowed to Jesus, a long, deep, and effective prayers, life will disappoint you. Bishop T.D. Yates preached a message many years ago. He said, favor, I am fair. And you know, that is how people talk about life, that life is not fair. Please listen to me. I know that by talking about membership, I've made some of you go down a bit. Now, let's let get back to the message that I'm bringing today. From time to time, you will hear the heart of a pastor. But let me get back to the message that God gave me. Hey, let's cry for Jesus. Let's cry for Jesus. <laughs> you actually came to the church not to listen about to membership. Is to listen. Because God actually gave me a message for you. He told me not many people will be here today. And he told him a message to give me. He said, you came to worship me, David. And I give you word for my people. All right? It's a privilege. Okay? Amen. Am I forgiving for that one that I've spoken? Was he a sin in the first place? Okay. I just wanted to know. <laughs> be prayerful. No matter how you can. Because life is not fair. Life is not what? Life is not fair. Don't just be pursuing life around. Don't just be pursuing job around. Don't just be pursuing husband. Even your husband. You, your husband that you know each other. There are things you want him to do for you that he cannot do for you. You can cry. You a river. He will still not do it. Because the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. Paul said, we live in this world, but we do not war after this world. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Because the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. They are not physical. They are mighty through God. To the pulling down of strong goals, casting down imaginations. <clears throat> and every attitude that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought of the obedience of Christ. If you know how many thoughts go on in the heart of men, doctors, if you know how many thoughts go on in the heart of men, Senab came home from her walk the other day. I met her on my bed, sitting down with my wife talking about the things they were discussing at the back concerning her in her place of work. 
for no reason. It was not totally true. 80% of it was not true. Me, I was just looking at her like this. Uh, it's prayers you need. They will, they will redeploy people. They, are, they will turn their back against each other. Just one person who does not even necessarily need to oversee Senab kept writing report for no reason. Report that are not normal. You can now write many letters, many whatever, whatever. The more you write, the more they will say, this guy cannot learn. But one day, when power jumps power in the spirit realm, they won't know why they just love you. The Bible says everybody that looked on Esther had favor on her. How, can, how beautiful are you that everybody will like you? How many of you have seen Miss World, Miss Universe, Miss Island, Miss whatever? I am a crit critical analyst. After all said and done, most beauty pageant that I've seen, they are not what they eulogize them to be. I just look at them, look at fighter analysis and say, some of them I can't even marry them though on physical level. On physical level, I'm not talking about because my wife, you know, can marry anybody say if it's the will of God. <laughs> Except I brought one one day. I said, so this one. He says it's the will of God. I said, no. I said, I said, why? I said, because everything, if it's the will of God, Chinese, if it's the will of God, Romania, if it's the will of God, Pakistan, if it's the will of God. I said, this one, if it's the will of God. So I now brought one, one day. But I wanted to know. <laughs> it cannot be the will of God. Will of God apart, though, there are some of those means, whatever, that I, I look at them and say, I can pick by myself, I can go and pick somebody more beautiful. Within 20, 20 kilometers range, just give me three days, I bring somebody. Impeccable. I said, how did this one get here? Most of the places we will get to, most of the great places you will have to get to in this life, will have to be by God's favor. You're not hearing me. What powers favor? is prayers. Oh. Favor doesn't just happen. In October, we're going to get into a message. God has given me a message for October. God has, if Jesus has not come, because he can give you a message for three years. And he comes to the, I refuse to be deceived. <laughs> the Navi say, I know, I know Jesus, if he's going to come three years, he won't give me the message. He can give me a message of 39 years, and he's coming today. Because Jesus himself does not know when he's going to come. So he sent the Holy Spirit to give you a message. He said, my father is not telling me. The father will just tap him, now is the time. And it's final. But, but he's always begging the father. Interceding on our behalf. No. I know you might want to say, let them come today, the father will just smile and go back again. <laughs> but one day, <laughs> maybe Jesus will have forgotten to pray in the morning. <laughs> father will just have it. Go! Once that is said, forever, oh Lord, thy word is set in the name. That's it. When we get to, when I, I really, God gave me a message. The message for next month is the Holy Spirit. And Pastor Mirella is here for me. Is the Holy Spirit. You will enjoy it. The fellowship and the power of the Holy Spirit. Activating the gift and the power of God amongst us. We've been praying. Some of you are supposed to be prophesying. Some of you are supposed to be doing things. Miracles. Academic year is coming in now. But October is we're going to teach on the details of how favor comes. Don't just say it's not of him that will, it's not of him that runs, it's of God that sows mercy. There is something they do that makes God so mercy. You're not hearing me. You can obtain mercy. You can find grace to help in time of need. You can obtain mercy. Mordecai, Mordecai has died in the place of service and prayers to raise Esther. He never bowed his knee to somebody else except God. And prayers three times a day. And has initiated Esther. Esther cannot say, let the whole Israel fast and pray for me for 30 days. If I perish, I perish. You cannot start 30 days fasting and prayer one day when you have not been doing one one day before. Hello? Hello? Because they didn't tell us the history of the life of Esther. 
He's been, she's been trained in the art of fasting and praying to get him, to even be enlisted as part of those that the king will consider. Prayers were made. Prayers bad favor. Don't forget. Write it down. Prayers bad favor. Say unto God, how great thou art, through the greatness of your powers that the enemies submit themselves to you. Is that not Psalm 66 verse 3? Say unto God, how great thou art, through the greatness of your powers that the enemies submit themselves unto you. Are you listening to what I'm saying? The Bible says everybody who looks on her had faith on her can everybody has faith on you. <laughs> Some of them want to think evil. They don't know what force is forcing them not to think evil. And they're always coming to consensus. Let us help her. Let us help her. Let us help her. Let us help her. They're always coming to consensus. It's powered from the room of intercession. Power from the room of intercession. If you're not intercessory over your life, you'll be beggarly in this life. And you won't know why life is throwing you at a scatter. Somebody has sickness. You're not praying. You believe in the doctor. You call ambulance. They go there. Till people die in this country. Doctors are trying to find out what is wrong with them and they cannot find it. They cannot find it. Because it's hidden in the spirit realm. If you don't pray, that the thing be flushed out, not just be found out, flushed out. <laughs> totally. And what is prayer about? Now that brings us to where we have been teaching. One commonality of all the people that bow their knees to receive grace from Jesus Christ is that. There are people that are desperate for help. You can't find grace in the sight of God if you are not desperate for help. Let me come down again. I want you to sink it because these are the things God taught me over the night. Of us, you also understand. Of us, he's a man. He's a, you, you don't need help. You are fighting, man. You don't need help. This one you are saying, of us, you also understand, is where you lock yourself. You say, God, there's a difference between talking and praying. Talking, you are right. Praying, you are begging. I don't think anybody understood what I'm saying. I don't think anybody understood what I'm saying. Sometimes I get to a point where I just get angry. Maybe about my wife, about the children. And God said, you're just getting angry and multiplying words. Turn it to prayers. It's the same power that is required. Turn it to prayers. You will see more results with prayers. With talking, you will get more hypertensive. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. Some of us like to exert energy, right? And then... Uh, you don't need grace. You have right already. What's the meaning of grace? But one thing about Jesus. Until your knees are bowed. Until your knees bow on the ground permanently. <laughs> fixed there. Requesting for help. The grace of Jesus doesn't come to you in an area of life. That's why when you see Pastor here at Boye, you see him like a beggar. As a matter of fact, when he's praying, I used to not like his prayers. Please listen to me. I used to not like his prayers because I was taught on the word. You have right with God. You have covenant with God. You have partnership with God. You, are, you can claim your right in faith in Christ. Those are the things I was taught. Then I say, Adebo, you pray. Father, this night, move, we pray you, please. Move. We beg you. Evil said we beg you in Jesus' name. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, do you want to hear something? The people that I'm following that are jumping over, you have right. You don't have to beg God. <laughs> the way, when they finish preaching, they now say, how many of you want to come out here? You know, we need three million euros. 
in this church. How many of you want to come? Come out, come out. And the Lord will bless you. Ademoye doesn't raise money. He is begging God. <laughs> His life is characterized by what? Humility, wealth, people. Everybody just helps from everywhere. <laughs> one day, one great man in Lagos, I met him. And a church, he gave somebody a place to do church with, beside his house. And he goes there from Sunday to Sunday. And one day, he just told me, I don't like to be going to, that, uh, to the church beside here. I said, why? He said, the man is preaching too fast. Pastor Demoye's church is about... From his house, about 70 kilometers away. This guy said, I like to be going to his own church where he is. I said, why? He said, I like the way he's talking it one by one. <laughs> Prayers and begging God powers it. I hope you are hearing what I'm saying. Powers it. When you are desperate for help, God will do it. Say amen. amen. Say amen. amen. That's what I've been telling us. All right. Now, look at somewhere here. When God, I said, when God really wants to help you, and some of you will have found this conflict. When God really wants to help you, you've been crying for help, and he has chosen to help you. When God really wants to help you and he has chosen to help you, you have cried for help and he has chosen to help you. But there are certain things that are disturbing him in your life. He's bringing grace, okay? You're going to be the talk of the town. You're going to be great. You're going to be affluent here. You're going to be influential. He will humble you. And like I said, humbling you is humiliation. Because he, that is when God does not have any other chance of removing certain things from your life anymore. And he wants to help you because you are crying for help. One example is Paul. And I want to take you through it. That's the reason why one of the things you should do with your life is that as you are crying for help, are there things that need to be removed? Personally be removing them one by one. If you are if you become a candidate of God's grace, that God say, I want to help him. You are not hearing me. If God doesn't want to help you, he won't touch you. How many of you have ever done this before that you only find out that you are not fit because you went to the gym or you went to for fitness, whatever. But before you went there, you didn't know you were not fit. People were even telling you in the church, you're so beautiful, you're so good. You too, you're not catwalking. Until you went to gym. They say, raise up your leg. <laughs> in one second. In one second. Some of you will not have had any problem except that God wanted to help you. I thought somebody would write it down. Some of you will not have had any problem in life except that God wanted to help you. Because you're good for life as far as life is concerned. But because your cry for mercy your cry for grace, your cry for help has entered into the ears of the Almighty and he really wants to make sure that his grace is seen in your life, then he will battle you. In Joel chapter 2, he said, I will restore to you the years that the cankerworm, palmerworm, locust, and caterpillars have eaten. He said, my army that I sent among you, my army. He didn't say devil's army. <laughs> when God sent an army to go and battle you, you're, you're not here. You're not here. You're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. When God sent an angel to go and break the knee of Jacob, some of you are in that process now. You're really going to be marvelously helped. And you're wondering, I've been praying, I've been fasting. Why am I not help? Because there are certain things God is pointing, God has pointed your attention to it several times, but it doesn't seem like anything. And God has to remove it. The problem of Jacob, dear Dockers, was that he was a runner, he was an athlete. <laughs> he 
was always slippery for God. And God said, what can we now do now so that he can be gentle? <laughs> and they just touched the hollow of the knee. Some of you have received a little of this. It's not punishment. It's even help. But it's physically humiliating. Ah, that's why sometimes, hold your tongue go. When you see some men of God pass through something, you just see their child dies or their wife just dies. There are things God tells them that only them know. Oh, you are not, you, I've lost you. I've lost you. I've lost you. There are things God tells them that only them know. God is not telling any other person and tell them, keep it. Don't tell anybody because they will think I'm a bad God. No. But I'm actually helping in this instance. Ah, is this thing too much for you in the church this morning? Is this thing too much for you in the church this morning? That's the reason why a number of the times when you are asking for help from God and you are asking for grace because one thing about God is that he will not put his grace on top of your effort. He will obliterate his, your effort so that only his grace can be seen. When Paul had to come to a point, I'm going to read and I want you to really follow me. When Paul had to come to a point and say, I am what I am by the grace of God. This is the same man that I've been saying uh, in signs of apostles, in signs, in wonders, in miracles. What did we not do? I, we have done everything. I, uh, I'm on the Pharisees. I'm Pharisee of Pharisees. I'm this. I'm a son of Pharisee. I'm say, and God said, ah, but this is too much for me. Even Jesus was not talking like this. You know, Jesus was a Jew, but he was not claiming many things. He just behaved like a lamb. Uh, God said, you are becoming a ram. I said, when did my lamb begin to grow on? When I came to Europe, brought back Stan Bronkisley, listen to me. When I came to Europe, even though I was a general overseer of a church from Nigeria, I became a Sunday school teacher in a Ghanaian church in London, in a primary school. No, not a Sunday school teacher. Sunday school teacher was glorified. I was a praise and worship leader. They just saw that I can sing. They just said, ah, Pastor David, you can believe it. That's how they retarded me into singing. <laughs> one of the pastors now came one day, Pastor Sam, Pangra. He said, some people don't know their ministry really. He was preaching. He said, with the way you sang now, it may be that singing is your real ministry. I didn't. That's how they relegated me to singing. The only reason I began to teach Sunday school was that my sister was there and he told them, he told them that this is a general overseer of a church in Nigeria. And I said, let us try him with Sunday school. I eventually pastored that church because the pastor went to Nigeria, I mean to Ghana and got trapped in Ghana. His visa was not renewed and I did not know. For almost six months and I was pastoring the church. I probably was even born again before this pastor. People there treating me as second fiddle. If they say, come out, let us come and pray for you, everybody will go to the pastor, me. I will be standing on the line to pray for people. Everybody. <laughs> Have you ever seen in the before that two people, two pastors are here with anointing oil? Everybody goes there. <laughs> and I didn't betray any emotion. No emotion betrayed. When I came to this country, Highland here, my counselee, whom I cancer when he got born again in 1994, I became his assistant in Dublin. He asked me, Pastor David, what do you want to do with your life? I asked him, you, what do you want to do? He said, I want to continue my full-time ministry. I said, I will help you. I became his assistant. Any day he asked me to preach, that's when I preach. When God is taking you through process so that his grace can fill all the spaces, he doesn't want a place that is filled by arrogance of man's effort. Yes! It is God that gave you beauty. Yes, it is God that gave you intelligence. Yes, it is God that gave you money. But this thing is not even working against God himself. Just like after God gave Solomon beauty, gave him money, gave him wisdom, he began to work against God. Solomon, God was not interested in him anymore. David, Reki, 
God was still interested in David. He restored him to kingship. He did everything to restore him, but he humiliated him so much. No, he humbled him. It's we that call it humiliation. He just humbled him. He said, I he now said, okay, be writing out everything you did that people don't know. Psalm 51. <laughs> he recorded his own adultery by himself. He said, write it out. But look at, look at David right now. He's in everlasting remembrance. Not Solomon. Jesus compared all the wealth of Solomon to lily of the valley grass. Oh, you missed something. You, you, missed, you missed this deep revelation. You just missed a deep revelation. Compared everything, just with a wave of hand, just treated everything Solomon was. I only saw one street named after Solomon in the whole of Israel. Everything is David. The flag of Israel, the star of David. Are you listening to what I'm saying? He's the most, he's the most decorated king. As a matter of fact, Jesus came through his order. But I thought Jesus was supposed to come from the order of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Really was Abraham mentioned. He knows he's the father of David. He's the, Jesus, son of Abraham. No, Jesus, son of David. Because God wanted to keep this guy in everlasting remembrance. That's why everybody commits fornication. Nobody catch them. But because God wanted to help you, you only kissed. Everybody caught you. <laughs> this one wave is up. <laughs> one day I was talking to God. I said, I wanted to rationalize things. I said, can, can we just be fair? No, I'm not serious. I'm not joking. I was in the office. Can, can we just be fair? I have friends now. I know what they did now. Ah, I didn't commit adultery with anybody. I didn't do anything with anybody. Why is my own suffering so much? Ah, 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 ah. What did I do? I only mismarried. And it's me that suffered this. So what concerns anybody? <laughs> that you're now suffering me with all the suffering of this. Ah, ah, ah. That is much more. Because the reason why I talk about my suffering, I feel pain inside my body. Bro Baxter, I feel pain. Both physical pain and psychological pain. But I will go to some of my friends. Even though some of them don't pastor any church anymore, they don't feel any pain. Now that Bishop Walioke invited me to come and preach, you see them that they are invited. You are not hearing me. 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 Please hear me. If you are a candidate, I say, no, when you are a candidate of God's help, mercy and grace, and has accepted that you are now a can you are enlisted for you to be kept in everlasting remembrance, he will make sure that only him exists in your life. It will battle every other factor out. That's why he kept Abraham and Sarah until they finally died. The meaning of death is that they don't have desire for each other anymore. <laughs> you are looking at me. Just imagine when you and your wife will have been, you have grown younger and you are 100. Your wife even told you, say, God, you say, please, <laughs> grandma, great grandma, <laughs> please, I just beg you, let everybody stay in there. <laughs> the imagination of man, of man doesn't die, but the affection that women have also don't, doesn't die. Even when they are doing stick like this, they think of you, my love. <laughs> and the man is not looking at her, say, eh? <laughs> The man said, God forbid. He said this. He said this. He said this. Have you, have you heard of the story? We're going to close 12 30. We will close 12 30. Don't worry, don't worry. Don't worry, it's this 12 30. We will close. All of you janitors that are looking at me, look at janitors, looking at timekeepers, looking at me. They've already planned. When I say 12, they've already planned what they're going to do by 12 30. Somewhere. God catch you today. Stay there. They are looking at you, they are just looking, they don't see that, they are just looking at you like this. <laughs> what can you do? Have you, do you remember the story of two people, a couple that went to Israel, and the woman died. They were very old, the woman died. And uh, they asked the man, to take your wife back to the United States will cost $5,000. To bury her here, cost you nothing. 
Uh, the man said, no. <laughs> Let me take her back to the United States. They said, why? He said, mm-mm. He said, because I learned very many years ago that <laughs> a man died there. <laughs> Under three days, he resurrected again. <laughs> After the very <laughs> After the very That this one that has died, I don't want her to resurrect. <laughs> don't you see the race with which our father and our progenitor raised to go and be with other concubines after our great grandmother. The imagination of man doesn't die. It's like when you are 18, the same way you have been looking at guys, still the same way. I am about 59, still the same way. Even God, guys will be singing, ah, ah, he's 50 years old. I say, no, you are a babe. <laughs> this one is a kid. One 80-year-old say, you are not too old to look. <laughs> the imagination of man, age doesn't take it away. The affection of women, the affection they need, age doesn't take it away. And you say, how are you, honey? You never peck me this morning. I know some of you will have looked at old people holding their hands on the street before, <laughs> walking themselves, and they are afraid like this. And they will just imagine this. <laughs> One of the guys in this church has told me before that she wants to go before she's like that. <laughs> that God just think <laughs> that she's not interested. <laughs> she's, not, she's not interested in another age. <laughs> that will not make your husband to be looking at you as a liability. <laughs> They say, where is grandma? He says, there, let me remove her pampas. <laughs> so, what I was saying, God made so Abraham die, 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 die. You know, I say, you are still a candidate of mercy. Abraham said, please, can we not be deceiving each other? <laughs> he said, but you are going to give back to Isaac. Abraham loved, Sarah loved, but yet, God brought forth Isaac. When you are a candidate of mercy and God is ready to help you, he will battle everything in your life. Let's read it. 2 Corinthians 12, 1 to 10. I want you to take this seriously and I close at this today. Brockinsley, I want you to take this very seriously, please. Take this very seriously. 2 Corinthians 12, 1 to 10, please. Yes. Are you there? From one? Ah, why is it that you here? Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, what I'm, the one I'm reading, okay. It is doubtless not a speedem for me to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Just mark it. Go on. I knew a man in Christ more than 14 years ago. He's talking about himself. Whether in the body, I cannot tell. Or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knows. Such a one was caught up to the third heaven. This man was a frequent visitor to the third heaven 40 years ago. And in such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knows. He was talking about himself that he can be in the body and out of the body. He can do any of the. Revelation was just so much. Power was just so much. The grace of God was just so much. And then I was caught up into paradise. And have severally had unspeakable words, which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Go on. Of such a one will I glory, yet not of myself. Will not glory except my infirmity. Go on. For though I would desire to glory, as I not be a fool, for I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above which he sees me to be, than he hears of me. Go on. Unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelation, there was given to him a turn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet him. Lest we be exalted above measure. Go on. For this thing, he besought the Lord thrice that he might depart from him. And God said to him, My grace is sufficient for thee, and my strength is made perfect in weakness. More gladly, therefore, will I rather. Will I glory rather in my, in, in my infirmity that the power of Christ may rest upon me? Stop there. Glory in infirmity that the power of Christ may rest. God endowed this guy with so much. 
Then he came to a point as a result of abundance of revelations. What happened to him? His head was exalted. When he's speaking, this is what you will find. This is what you will find in the book of Revelation, chapter 2 of the church in Ephesus. That's the kind of Paul. The church in Ephesus, they had understanding of times and seasons. They understood God's revelations, God's death, God's doctrine, this doctrine of service and of baptism, and they stood on the word of God very firmly. They could defend, they could speak with mystery, with death. But something was lacking. They are coming to a point where they are actually speaking to impress. They are actually speaking to make people know we don't allow such kind of people around us here. The mercy and the grace and the love of God are not being exalted. Revelation is now more exalted than God's mercy, God's love, God's grace. Check your life in your relationship with people. When rights are decorum are more important than mercy, love, and grace, you are in trouble. God's name is not decorum. God's name is not, is not protocol. God's name is love. Paul got to a point where he was received. He would talk to Peter anyhow. He would talk to this anyhow. He would, he would, he would handle Jewish people anyhow. And God said, ah. It seems as if your background as a law student is affecting you. You have doctorate in law, but there's a problem here. So a messenger of Satan was sent to buffet him. Say, God, take it away. Say, no. He said, because if this infirmity is not there, my grace cannot rest on you. That's the reason why it's so important, ladies and gentlemen, to pray. God, please, it may not be pleasant to me. Open my eyes to see what is battling you in my life. You didn't hear what I said. Open my eyes to see what is battling you in my life. Some of us is that you're sick, physically okay, your head is the issue. You even tell people, I only drink water, I don't take no medicine. So the people who take medicine, they are less of a human being to God. Are you listening to them? Some of you, it's your education. You're so educated and you know it, and as a result of education, you know, platform are created for you, doors open for you. Some of you, it could even be as a result of the wife you're married to. You're always elogizing her, or the husband you're married to, you're always elogizing him. Some of us, it's as a result of the kind of job we do. Some of us, is that it's a result of one family we came from. Our upbringing. Paul was always referring to his root. I'm a Pharisee of Pharisee. I'm a Jew of Jews. I am this, I am that. He would talk. He said, let me talk about mystery. Let me talk about revelation that Christ has given to me. As a matter of fact, he came to a point where he was calling the gospel of Jesus Christ my gospel. He said, according to my gospel. <laughs> because you know God is very merciful. He'll be so gracious to you that he will commit certain things to you, you will think you own them. You think, you say, my style and my genre of, uh, of music is different from what everybody sings in the gospel cycle. Yo, yo. The way we teach in our church is quite different from the way they teach in, you know, you, you, self-importance set in. And as at this time, God has enlisted you as a candidate of mercy, of grace, and of help. Ah. So he will not stand and battle that thing. So that he will replace it with infirmity. That his grace may rest upon it. But can a man avoid this? Can a woman avoid this? Can a church avoid this? Can a couple avoid this? Can a family avoid this? When they tell you your child is the most beautiful one in the church, say it's not true. Every child belongs to God. When they say your wife is the most beautiful, they want your wife to die. When they say nobody's like your husband, they want your husband to die or accident. Where will not be using crutches, but the grace will still rest. <laughs> when they 
when you begin to say, nobody thinks like me in that church, who do you think you are? You'll be the most stupid of all. There came a point, if you follow the trajectory of Paul, there came a time that you discover that Paul sees himself as almost more important than even Peter. He talks to Peter as he wanted. Because that he, he said, God gave you ministry to the Jews. I don't know who was dividing it. He said, he gave me ministry to the Gentiles. When Jesus gave ministry to Peter, he said, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Paul helped him divide it. Don't forget, Peter eventually died in Rome, teaching and preaching to people before his death. We are the one that has the message of healing. How do you know that holiness does not heal people? How do you know that when people conduct deliverance, they don't go through healing? We are the one, we are, very, we are a very prayerful church. That's the reason why with all the prayers, result is very far. Are you listening to what I'm saying? That's the reason why you pray to God. You ask him, is there any, it's a major prayer to pray. Is there anything battling? Like during the course of the week, I've been asking the Lord, is there anything? God, let's talk to each other. It's not just about prayer, prayer. Is there anything battling you in my life? I need to know so that I can remove it. 